In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the name of the only God, His Word, and His Spirit. Amen. Unfortunately, in many a so-called Christian country or a country of uh, so-called Christian traditions, uh, more and more demands are done to celebrate gay marriages. We find here, I mean, marriages, so-called marriages of people of the, the same sex. This should be rejected when we deal with the subject according to a Christian biblical viewpoint in the Old and in the New Testament, in the Old and in the New Covenant. Already in the book of Genesis, it is said that God created them male and female, so marriage is between a man and a woman. Christian marriage is between one man and one woman, and when Jesus was asked about divorce, repudiation, which means the possibility of another marriage, a second marriage for the husband or for the wife, Jesus said it was not so at the beginning, it was because of the, the cruelty of the hard hearts that Moses, not God, allowed repudiation and divorce. So, from a Christian viewpoint, and from a uh, a Jewish Old Testament viewpoint, especially in the first uh, books of Moses. Uh, well, let me talk in detail about the Jewish law, which we find in the, especially in Leviticus and Deuteronomy, well, gay people were condemned to death. In Christianity, in the New Testament, of course, there is mention, especially in the letters of St. Paul, but of course there is no death penalty anymore, but this does not mean that gay marriage is normal. Anyway, we do know that in the homosexual situation, two people of the same sex are attracted to each other. We are not here to judge people. We are not here to analyze this phenomenon, whether it is a, a thing which comes from the nature and which people cannot do anything about. We are not here to judge that in some cases this comes from a perversion. We are not here to judge. We are only here to repeat what the Lord in the creation has done and said. Marriage in the Holy Scripture means only one thing, the union between a man and a woman for the sake of love as representatives of the love of God for His people in the Old Testament, representatives and symbols of the love of Christ for his church in Ephesians 5, 21 and following. And the second goal, which at times is put as first by some Jewish and Christian theologians, is procreation. God created parents so that they may procreate. And you can have no procreation with two people from the same sex. Uh, as I said, unfortunately I don't have here the texts, but it's easy to find them uh, through internet. Well, apparently also Islamic law, like the Old Testament, condemns homosexuals to death. Now let us not take advantage of the lack of condemnation to death in order to make of the gay marriage something normal, something allowed by the scriptures. So a Christian is not allowed to think that gay marriage is right. How about atheists? Well, let atheists look at nature. A union which does not produce procreation is not marriage. You can call it something else. 
Anyway, unfortunately, when we look at uh, the Holy Scripture, at Sodom and Gomorrah, near the Dead Sea here in Palestine, then we understand that it was that sin. Uh, I, would I wouldn't like to give more details. Uh, just read the book of Genesis and let us at the same time be honest enough to acknowledge what we read in the scriptures and not to manipulate it. And on the other hand, let us be full of charity and understanding to people who are gay, but never consider their union, if any, as Christian or something going according to the scripture and not even according to nature. Otherwise, as His Holiness Pope Benedict XVI says, we are slaves of the dictatorship of relativism. La dictature du relativisme. What is relativism? You, the relativism claims that you can never know the truth. That everything is right and wrong at the same time. That everything is fine. Everything is relative. It depends on your viewpoint. This is your viewpoint. There are other viewpoints. This is relativism. Where is relativism? In the so-called Christian world. Although Jesus was very clear, I am the truth. And not only God is love, not is God only love. God is love, God is the truth. And there is no contradiction between love and truth. Ephesians 4.15 Let us be honest about it. The Jewish and the Islamic world I'm talking about texts. I'm not talking about people. Because people might say whatever they please. When you go to the Jewish and Islamic texts, they are very clear against homosexuality, which both sources condemn to death. So there is dogmatism, absolutism on the one hand, going to the extension of commanding people's death by law, by Sharia, by Torah. And in the Christian, so-called Christian world, laxism and relativism under the pretext of love and freedom. Did I say freedom? St. Peter and St. Paul warn us. Let not freedom be the opportunity for the flesh. And the other text, let you be free, but not so free in order to, do, to justify your malice and iniquity. So freedom in the truth and in the ethics, in the moral. Without morals, without truth, there is no real freedom, but really slavery. As the Lord said, truly, truly, Amen, Amen, Emar Lechun, in Aramaic. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who ever commits sin is a slave. In some manuscripts we read, is a slave of sin, tis amartias in Greek. But the most ancient manuscripts read, whoever commits sin is a slave. Isn't homosexuality a form of slavery? What about the human, the future of human mankind, of humankind, if most of its members were gays? Men united with men, women united with women. How can you have any offspring? How can you have any procreation? What is this creation without procreation? Actually, creation wanted procreation. God said to our first parents, multiply, 
multiply a man and a woman. The only way to multiply is a man and a woman. Now you would say, how about artificial ways for procreation? Tube children or whatever, call them whatever you like. Well, there is something lacking here. There is the human element of love. And then, human psychology needs a father and a mother. Every one of us needs the other sex. And this you we find in the parent of the other sex. And this is why we have, as the Greek mythology, teaches us, but it's true actually, how a male child likes his mother and how a female child likes her father. You know, the so-called complexes of Oedipus and Electra. So, take out the mythology. Even in Arabic we say, every, every daughter admires her father. And when a man marries, he looks for his mother in his wife. And when a, a young lady or a lady marries, she looks for her father in her husband. Well, so was God wrong when he created men and women? Was it, would, have, it, would it have been normal for God to create only men? Or only women? All these questions we ask without judging anyone. Because as you know, uh, apparently even people who practice pedophilia, so it seems, are psychologically sick. There is a pathologic element, especially in people who are oppressed and depressed by their fathers, especially when they were young, when they were small. So they would take their revenge on other children. So it seems, I'm not judging anyone, this I'm saying for the fifth time already. So, is homosexuality a sickness? where no one is responsible? Or is it a good thing? Well, we know the high percentage of, of AIDS among homosexuals. This is no secret. And we know that gay marriage, if any, or gay unions, let's not call them marriages, excuse me, never, never give children, never give offspring which means that it's sterile. And again and again, we fall in what His Holiness, Pope, the Blessed Pope, John Paul II, used to call the culture of death. The culture of death, la cultura della morte. Thank you for your attention.